Now, I very rarely get excited nowadays about new golf ball releases, but in this bag is something which Callaway claim is very, very, very exciting. Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here guys. First things first, I would like to warmly welcome you all to the channel. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel if you're not new to the channel. But guys, if you are new to this channel, especially today, you want to hit that subscribe button below because I'm giving away two dozen of the brand new Callaway Chrome Soft X LS golf balls for you guys to try. So guys, make sure you do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, why not invite a mate because you want to win some golf balls and we're nearly at 150,000 subscribers. All you have to do, you have to be a subscriber, you have to like this video and comment below LS. Those letters, those letters there. Right, now that's out of the way. As I said in the introduction, I very rarely get excited anymore about golf balls. You see, generally, when golf balls get released, they're white, they're uh, round, and generally they go a certain distance. Now, the new Callaway Chrome Soft X LS Quite a mouthful actually. Is it the future of long distance golf balls? Is it going to replace the Titleist Pro V1 as the number one ball in golf? And is it too good at its job of being a low spin golf ball? That could be the case for quite a few people out there. We all know, or you guys know if you watch my reviews, that for me with irons, I'm generally a little bit too on the low spin inside, but then this ball with the driver could prove to be perfect because if it knocks a couple of RPM off my drives, I mean, that'd be glorious. So we're going to give it a full bag test today. I'm going to hit some wedges, some irons, and a driver with it. We're going to see just how it does perform, what spin numbers it gives us, what ball speed, what distance it gives us, and how it feels and sounds, because that's a big deal when testing a golf ball. How does it feel off the putter? How does it feel off the wedges? How does it feel off the face of your irons? Now, ideally, guys, we would do this outside. We'd get to see the full ball flight. We'd hit some balls into greens and see how they spin back, or when I shank them, see how they fly into the trees over the wall. But we're going to have to wait another couple of weeks for that, because golf still isn't allowed here in the UK. Still can't believe that's a thing, but anyway, right. First couple of shots with the 50 degree. And straight away initially, that felt quite, it actually feels softer. I'm not gonna lie, I've had a warm up with this ball already and it actually feels a little bit softer than what I anticipated it would have done. I thought Callaway Chrome Soft X LS, it's gonna feel like a brick, it's gonna feel really hard, and I'm certainly not gonna leave ball residue on the wedge face. And I was wrong about all those things. It actually feels, so, can I say soft? I suppose I can really. But guys, as well as commenting below LS to try and enter the competition to win the Callaway Chrome Soft X LS golf balls, get in the comments below and let me know what golf ball do you use? Why do you use it? Do you use it because it's cheap? Do you use it because it's good? Do you use it because you're fitted into it? Because you like the feel of it? You like the performance of it? Do you use it because you like the cool graphics on it that help you with your alignment and with your game? So the new Callaway Chrome Soft X LS is a tour certified golf ball and Callaway are quick to claim this golf ball isn't gonna be for everybody, it isn't gonna be for quite a few people. It certainly isn't for your mid handicap, your high handicap or your beginner golfer. This is for the golfer that wants to get that ultra low spin, wants to send out those knuckle balls and it features a large soft cast core, a high speed dual mantle and a new thin propriety urethean cover as well as a new aerodynamic design to reduce drag and increase distance. So that's all well and good. But how does it perform? That was nice again. See, I'm not losing too much spin with these shots, which initially would be a concern of mine if I switched to a mega low spin golf ball. We're gonna hit five shots with each. Another nice one. Ooh, excellent spin numbers there, actually. See, I don't know any golfer in the world that would want a low spin golf ball with a wedge, and I guess that's part of the overall golf ball design, isn't it? Can you get low spin with the irons, low spin with the driver, but then maintain that spin around the greens and with the shorter clubs? Again, guys, I have had a warm up already with this golf ball throughout the bag. And I'm, all I'm gonna say is I'm really looking forward to hitting driver again. So make sure you do stay tuned for that. I pulled that one a bit. All up with a wedge, with a wedge. Right, last shot with the wedges and then we're gonna move up onto irons. Now, interestingly, what I'm looking at here is my peak height and they're all very, very, very similar. That shows me that I'm swinging fairly consistent today, but also that the ball is 
pretty much doing what I want it to do. Again, we would usually do this outside. We do it so you can see the ball fly, but again, golf's under lock and key for now. Excellent. Right, we're gonna go seven iron because I always think people can relate to a seven iron better than any other iron in the bag. So let's go with that and let's talk you through a little bit more about the characteristics of this new golf ball from Callaway. So I mentioned earlier, it has a large soft cast core that's designed to increase speed and distance, which is always nice, isn't it? I always wonder how much of this is actually scientific and how much is just like a, a marketing page on the back of the box. We have the high speed dual mantle system for maximum ball speed and consistent spin, which so we can kind of test that today. The new thin propriety urethane cover, which provides a soft feel and excellent spin control. All these kind of keywords, Callaway ticking off on the box, which if you stood there in the shop reading it, you're thinking, oh, high speed, consistent spin, distance, yes, all those things. And also one of the bigger pieces of technology, which loads and loads and loads of R&D will have gone into, is the new low spin aero design to reduce drag for longer distance and again, consistent trajectory. So keywords that keep, keywords that keep popping up in there, consistency, distance, spin, all those kind of buzzwords which you would associate with golf ball marketing. But how does it perform? Seven iron. Okay, that's, um, it's a little bit longer than what I would have anticipated. The spin's down, spin's down at 5.3 which is low even for me, but that's a decent an opener. It's a little bit left, but come on, jumpers are available. They are still. Is that just a little bit too low spin for me though? Oh, that is left, James Robinson. So the golf ball isn't an anti-left golf ball, which is a shame. Let's try and just hit some of those buttery fades. That's better, that's way better. That's more around the number I would expect and the spin is still a little bit lower to be fair. Again, nice consistent peak height with these shots. Let's go two more. Decent, decent. And you know, it is always a funny story when I test golf balls to show you guys the properties of them, how they perform, how they feel. Because often I think, well, I've hit four seven irons there and I've hit them pretty good. There was one bad one that went left, but the numbers were still okay. So it would be there or thereabouts on the green because the strike was okay. But how good do you have to be to really see a difference from your golf ball? Because golf ball fitters around the world will tell you everyone sees a difference from the golf ball. But when you put that into a score, like numerically for your round of golf, I'd love to know where the cutoff point is. I would. Last shot with the seven iron. And again, I should hit way more shots than this to make this a scientific test, to make it a proper test in a lot of people's eyes, but we haven't got time for that. So we're gonna hit five shots with each. And I think that's enough just to give a first impressions on this golf ball. I'm gonna test this a lot more with the new TP5 and with other new golf balls, the new Pro V1, for example, out on the golf course, again, once we're allowed, when Boris opens us up. Okay, that felt incredible. That felt incredible. It's, that's the perfect seven iron for me. Perfect. 168 yards, spinning at 6.3, ball speed 118. It felt really, really, really good. And that's something which I certainly am good enough to give you an opinion on. When you hit this out the middle, it feels very, very premium, very, very good. Not all golf balls do feel that way. I remember when I first moved into the TP5X, which I did use all last year, initially I hated the feel of it. I hated the sound of it. It was horrible but the performance was pretty good. So I stuck with it and got used to it. Whereas this for a low spin golf ball doesn't feel bad, doesn't sound bad. So it might be an easier transition into it is where I'm trying to get with that. If we do transition into it, if you do transition into it as well. So that's the seven iron done and dusted. And you may all be thinking, right, so he's hit a wedge, he's hit a seven iron, probably gonna move into three wood now, try and smash some three woods into orbit and probably hit them left. And then he's gonna hit driver. And that's not what I'm going to do because for this video, for the people that would use this golf ball, I think a lot of you would be using some kind of driving iron because you enjoy playing that knuckleball shot, you enjoy playing that stinger. So um, 
I need to stop doing that when I test golf balls, but that's what we're gonna do. James, what did you do at work today? Oh, I tested a new low spin golf ball hitting stingers with a two iron, try and keep it really low and see how low I could get them to spin. <laughs> what a day, what a day. Okay, that's, that's impressive, that's, um, yeah, yeah. This was gonna go out of the bag, but match it with this ball and maybe we've got some kind of secret weapon. Is this the end of the dominance that we've seen from Titleist and maybe a little bit more recently tailor-made in the golf ball, player's ball department? Could be, have another low spinner. Okay, that was really toey. So now all of a sudden we're just testing the shots as opposed to the balls and that. It wasn't a great swing, but it's in place. So I'm happy with that. The ball reacted okay. I can't really give you an opinion for a ball on a miss hit because that doesn't, doesn't really make a difference. Hmm. So if you haven't got it yet, I'm really enjoying this test. I think I'm enjoying the aspect of just hitting golf balls or a golf ball but I'm enjoying the feedback, I'm enjoying the sound, I'm enjoying the feel and the shots that it's given me. And I feel like if I was playing golf today with this ball, it'd be a good day. You know, we all have those occasional good days. I think it'd be one of them. Right, two more driving irons and then the big dog. That's so good. That is so good. I mean, how could you take this club out of the bag now after four shots? Hopefully five shots like this. Let's try and get a real Tiger Woods low spin. Oh, stop it, James. That's frightening. 2,000 spin, 240 yards on the line. This video is more than just about a golf ball now because that was incredible. And the feel of the low spin golf ball with this kind of two iron head, depending on what time you watch this, I could use terminology that would get me in trouble or wouldn't get me in trouble. I'm going to err away from it, but it's good. Right, big dog, big dog time. We've all been waiting for this, all of us, even me. Also, how do we all feel about the triple track technology? Obviously the putters are still here with the red and blue alignment aids. I don't mind it. I think if I did use this Callaway Chromesoft XLS, I wouldn't necessarily want the one with the triple track on. I'd just use the kind of normal ball, normal alignment and draw a big thick black line on it like I enjoy doing so, right. So we're gonna hit this hard. We're gonna see how far it can go, what spin characteristics we get. I don't really care where it goes because that's not a golf ball test, is it? The golf ball will pretty much go wherever I hit it, but it, it kind of relaxes me a bit that, knowing that I can just hit it hard. Okay, so as a starter, I would absolutely love that off the first tee. The spin wasn't actually that low. It's spinning at 2,900 which isn't bad, but if we look at the number that really counts, 275, so I'm quite happy with that. Obviously the spin will be determined where I strike it on the face as well. I couldn't quite feel where that one came out of. Felt a little bit maybe there, so. With this test, I must feel like it's, can I just get one out of the middle hard and see how it spins there? Because whenever you are testing a golf ball, consistency of me matters just as much as consistency of that little white thing that we're trying our best not to lose three or four around of. See, that was high out the face. But it's not bad again, to exactly the same distance. Actually feels firmer off the driver face than it did the irons and the wedge, which is interesting. I don't mind a, a firm feeling ball with a driver. By the way, has anyone else seen Roger Steele on Instagram? I've been following him for a while and whenever I test drivers now, I try and get his rhythm, I try and get it up here and then loads of, really, really cool guy. Go and check it out if you want to, to see it. I mean, I don't hit it anywhere near as far as him as well, which is upsetting, but. That's the one. Two, four spin, two, eight, one total. Yes, please. Right, unfortunately, this is the last shot. And I say unfortunately because I've really enjoyed this. As a golf ball feel-wise, I cannot, I can't really, I just can't criticize it. It feels impeccable, it feels really good. Sounds good as well, obviously. Sounds are different inside as opposed to outside. So I will be interested to get it out on the golf course and test it. 
Remember guys, if you want to win a dozen of these golf balls for yourself, then get in the comments below, comment LS, subscribe to the channel and like this video. And if this one goes over 285, I'll buy a load more to give out as well. Ooh, nearly. I mean, it's left, but... Oh, that's a shame. That's jumpers available, that one. That's, that's ruined it. Uh, but guys, that is... I can't finish on that one. No way. No way am I finishing on that one. Not happening. Come on. This shows you how much I'm enjoying this. That one. Oh, that one. 2.5 spin, 2.82. Now we, can, now we can finish. So that is it's a load of shots hit with a brand new Callaway Chrome Soft LSX XLS golf ball. I knew I was going to get that wrong at some point today. How does it perform? I'm not going to throw it up in the air again either. Let's take a look. So dispersion, we're going to start with the driver and work our way back because that's what's on the screen. Pretty good. Again, the golf ball isn't going to be the determining factor of dispersion. There was one jumpers are available shots there. Um, and apart from that, quite happy with them. Moving down to the two iron, I mean, that's just glorious, isn't it? That's, again, if it was, if it was pre post watershed, whatever that means, I'd be giving you some really good terminology about that. But really happy with that, really happy with the peak height. Seven iron, again, just happy with the consistency of the ball flights, really. That's not too bad at all. And the wedge. Pretty much same story. I do feel like I've swung pretty well today, so it's going to be interesting to see the numbers. And speaking of the numbers, I'm going to show you all the averages. So driver, 273, 277 total, club head speed 109, ball speed just shy of 159, and a spin of 2771, which isn't bad. But if we do delve into all the drivers, and I'm not going to do this with all the clubs, but I would like to just see them all. Well, you can see that the spin rates were pretty consistent. There was one high one at 3000, but one low one at 2434, and that was one of the longer drives. The second one, 25. So when I did get the low spin, that resulted in my longer drives, the ones up there at 281, 282. I know, I know, Roger Steele, yeah, one day. And then the two iron was just glorious, 227, 235, spinning at 25. Seven iron, 169, which is slightly above average for me realistically, spinning at 56, so quite low. And you can see the gap wedge there, 9,721 spin for shots of 106 and 105 yards, respectively. Now, that for me is very impressive. I'm, I don't think it's an ultra, ultra, ultra low spin golf ball that halves your spin because well, that would be scientifically impossible and B, it would be pointless because not many people need to kind of half the spin. But does it knock a little bit off? I think it probably does. Obviously, it depends how you strike the ball, how you hit the ball. We saw there with the driver that when I did get a spin of 2.4, 2.5, I got a little bit extra distance there, albeit a couple of yards. And if I could change my technique to do that more often with a standard golf ball, I would obviously hit it further, depending how I strike it and how I swing it. With the irons, I think 5.6 spin for me with a 7 iron. Remember, these aren't quite blades, but they're nearly there. It's a little bit on the low side. I think I've struggled to... I'd almost see that maybe dipping out of its flight a little bit, but the distance was good. Again, I do feel like I've struck it good today, and I have to profess that when I have days where I don't strike it very good on videos, I openly tell you. So I have struck it quite good today, and the spin with the wedges was absolutely fine. Feel-wise, it's incredible. It's really good. Is it going to knock Titleist and TaylorMade off the perch? I don't know. I think there's a lot of brand loyalty at the moment with golf balls. I think people who have always used Titleist Pro V1s will probably still use Pro V1s, and the people who maybe made the switch into the TP5 might well look at this. I think if you are, if you are thinking of changing your golf ball for 2020-21 and fancy a change, this isn't going to be for everyone. This isn't going to be for, like I said earlier, most golfers, but it's definitely worth a try if you're wanting that lower spin and a nice feeling golf ball. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed that. If you have, make sure you do subscribe for future videos the every day so you don't want to really miss them. If you want to be with a chance of winning the balls, you have to be a subscriber. You have to like this video and comment below LS. Apart from that, guys, if you want to see some non-golf related videos, which are quite cool, go check out the Off Course channel. I'll link that in the description. And after that mouthful, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.